Hello guys, today we are going to make a signboard and a wall art using acrylic sheets. I'm really excited to share two methods with you. One where you simply cut out shapes and one where you cut pieces that fit perfectly with each other like puzzles. I will give you the settings that I used and tell you how to figure them out yourself. And yes, this is going to be the only video you will ever need on laser cutting acrylic sheets using a diode laser. Welcome back to Melopine Lasers. Before we start, there are some safety precautions you need to know. Laser cutting acrylic produces harmful fumes, so make sure you set up your laser in a well-ventilated room. Use a fume extractor or air filter if you have one. And always wear your laser safety goggles. Just like always, here is the TLDR version. You get a sheet of acrylic, make the design you want to cut, and make sure the width of all your design elements is larger than the thickness of the sheet you use. Use an air assist if you have one. If you have a 20 watt machine, run it at around 1250 mm per minute and 100% power with two passes for each mm thickness of acrylic. For a 10 watt machine, go for 800 mm per minute and four passes for each mm. These numbers are for black acrylic. I will give you the settings for different colors later in the video. You must know six things to cut acrylic on a diode laser. Choosing the color, the thickness of your sheet, the design, focusing the laser, the settings, and the accessories you need. The first step is choosing the color. The best option here is to go with black acrylic sheets as much as possible, because it's easier to get a good clean cut on black acrylic sheets than on other colors using a diode laser. I have explained how color affects laser cutting performance in my laser engraving glass video. If you want, you can check that out later. If you want different colors, you can cut black acrylic and color the pieces to get different colors. One more thing you need to know is that opaque sheets are easier to cut than transparent color sheets. Also, you cannot cut clear acrylic sheets on a diode laser. Another thing that you cannot do is not subscribe to the channel. I mean, you can, but if you do subscribe, you'll get to learn a lot of cool tips and tricks about lasers. The next step is choosing the thickness of your sheet. This depends on the depth of field of your laser module, which is directly linked to the focal length of your laser. I will explain this in detail in the end of this video. If you have an engraver which typically has a short focal length, you should try to stick to a maximum thickness of 2 to 3 mm. On my 20 watt X2 D1 Pro, which is more like a cutter than an engraver, I have cut up to a thickness of 8 mm with an air assist. Now comes the design part. You need to make sure that all your design elements are at least as wide as the thickness of your sheet. This is because if the width of a piece is less than the thickness of the sheet, there is a high chance of it breaking. However, if you are careful enough, you can cut intricate designs. Just make sure you peel off the coating on the sheet before you cut them. The next step is knowing how to properly focus your laser for cutting acrylic. You should try to focus the laser at the middle of your workpiece. For example, if you want to cut 2mm thick acrylic, you should set the focus 1mm lower than you usually would for engraving. Let's say you have a laser that requires a 5mm gap between the surface and the module. For cutting a 4mm thick acrylic sheet, you should set the gap as 3mm. On my Xtool D1 Pro, there is this nifty feature which allows you to compensate for the material thickness. If my material thickness is 4mm, I just have to align the focus bar with line 2 for 6mm with line 3 and so on and then focus the laser the way I usually do. Next is figuring out the settings you need to use. I will tell you the settings that work for me. You can use those but I would always recommend you run some tests to figure out the settings that works best for you. If you have light burn, you can make some squares and run them at different speeds and different number of passes. You will be using 100% of your laser's power most of the time. But if you want a longer life for your laser, you can try running it at a lower power. But this also means you'll have to lower your speed. So here are the numbers. You can use these numbers as a starting point for your test. On my 20 watt X2 D1 Pro, I cut black acrylic at 1 to 5 0 mm per minute speed with 4 to 5 passes and 100% power. You can see the settings for different colors and different machines on the screen. You can pause the screen or take a screenshot for reference. Now. While testing, you need to look for the best edge finish. If your edges have a burnt appearance, you need to increase the speed and increase the number of passes. If your edges have a frosty appearance, try reducing the number of passes or increase the speed. Now about the accessories you need. If you have an air assist, use it. 
An air resist pressure of 20 PSI is enough most of the time, but if you can, I would recommend you to use 30 PSI. Anything above 30 PSI will only have a marginal difference, so it's not worth it. If you have a compressor, I will soon post a video on how to make an air assist out of it. If you have an exhaust system, you should use it. Laser cutting acrylic produces a lot of fumes and it stinks. So you should try to run your laser in a well ventilated room. I would recommend you to use a honeycomb bed for work holding, but if you don't have that, you can raise your sheets on some wood blocks. It's also a good idea to use double sided tape to hold your workpiece to the bed, especially if you are using large sheets. The heat produced while cutting can bend the sheets and affect your cut. The air assist can also blow the cut pieces out of the cut and onto the path of the laser, which can ruin your piece. So that's one thing to keep an eye out for. One more thing that I tried to figure out was if the protective layer on the sheet has any effect on cutting. It turned out there wasn't any noticeable difference whether the layer was on or off. I'd recommend you to leave it on to prevent any scratches while handling. However, if your sheet has a layer of plastic, you should remove it. Lasering plastic produces harmful fumes and it can damage your laser and is toxic for you. So that's how you cut acrylic. I'll now show you how to cut pieces that fits perfectly together like puzzles. If you were to cut designs and place them within the cutouts, it would fit but it wouldn't stay there. This is because when laser cuts acrylic, it creates a small gap or curve. In Lightburn, there's this feature called curve width offset that lets you make pieces that fit perfectly together. The cut lines will move outward if you set a positive value for the curve offset and it will shrink when you set a negative value. Let's say you need a red square insert on a black acrylic sheet. You'll first cut a square using zero curve offset on the black sheet and then you'll cut the same square on the red sheet using a positive curve offset. This will make the red square slightly larger than it usually would be and the piece will fit perfectly. You can also go the other way around. You can first cut the red square with zero offset and then cut the black using a negative offset. This will make the black square slightly smaller and the red piece will fit in. To figure out the curve offset value, you need to do some trial and error. This is because the curve offset can change based on the color of the sheet and the spot size of your laser. You'll have to cut small squares or circle on the first color and then cut the same shape on the next color using a 0.1 offset. If the piece doesn't fit, you'll have to increment the curve offset by 0.1 each time. If the piece becomes too large, you should try the values between the previous value and the value you used. Let's say at 0.2 curve offset, the piece is too small and at 0.3, it's too big. You should try the values between 0.2 and 0.3, like 0.22 or 0.25. If you get it right, you'll have to put some pressure to fit it together. And when you pick it up and shake it, the pieces won't fall apart. Let me show you how I made an artwork using this technique. I had to do some tinkering to figure this one out. We have three dominant colors for this design, red, black, and yellow. Three colors would mean using three different acrylics with very different properties. For black, red, and yellow, the speed and power remain a constant at 1250 mm per minute and 100% on my 20W X2 D1 Pro. The only thing that changes is the number of passes. For me, the black acrylic cuts at 4 passes, red at 8 passes, and yellow at 13 passes. We can't just cut pieces using the same settings and expect them to fit together. For the black pieces, I used 0 curve offset. For the red pieces, I used 0.2 curve offset. And for the yellow pieces, I used 0.25 curve offset. Once all the pieces were cut, I simply pressed the pieces into the cutouts and everything fit perfectly without any glue. I can pick it up and tap it and it won't fall apart. For the white eyes, I cut them in red acrylic and gave them a coat of white paint as it's really difficult to cut white acrylic on a diode laser. I'll now show you how I made a signboard. I used Lightburn for the letters. Since there weren't many good fonts available, I downloaded some fonts from the internet and used them. I first determined the size of my signboard, which turned out to be 5 feet in length. I used X2 D1 Pro which has a cut area of 400 by 400 mm. All of the letters would not fit in this area, so I split them into two. You can also cut out the letters one at a time. After the letters were cut, I used my bandsaw to cut long pieces of white acrylic to make the side walls for the letters. Cut them into pieces with the right length and glue them onto the letters. For letters with curves like the P and O, I used a hot air gun to heat and then bent it to give it the right shape. 
You can also use hair dryers or hair straighteners. Just don't bend them without heating. If you do, it will snap. Once the letters were ready, I placed some LED strips inside and then wired it all up. And that's it. Now let's talk about the theory of how this entire process works. When the laser beam hits the material surface, it transfers the energy to the molecules on the surface. These molecules release the extra energy in the form of heat and vaporizes the surrounding material. Not all colors absorb the energy from a blue diode laser the same way. White reflects almost all of the beams and it's not possible to cut it on a diode laser. Blue is difficult to cut but it's better than white. For cutting, laser modules with longer focal lengths are better. This is because when the focal length is more, the depth of field is also larger. When a laser beam emerges from the focusing lens, it starts converging and becomes a small spot at a particular distance. This is the focal length. Now, after converging at the focal point, it starts diverging. There is a small distance between the converging point and the diverging point where the beam width remains almost constant. This is called the depth of field. A longer depth of field means the laser beam can stay in focus for longer, which means you can cut thicker materials. Most diode laser engravers use a lens with a small focal length. This is because a smaller focal length gives you a better spot size, which translates to better detailing, which is a good thing for engraving. For cutting materials, laser modules with a longer focal length will give you better results when cutting thick work pieces. Oof, that's all the science stuff. Anyway, that's two impressive crafts in under 15 minutes. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do try these out and let me know in the comments below. And as always, hit that like button if you found this video helpful. If you didn't, you could click the other one. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you around. Goodbye.